everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Horizons Daybreaker for episode 16. Now, last episode, we made ourselves the modular armor from the modular armor mod, and uh, since the end of last episode, I've gone ahead and added a couple more upgrades uh, to, I think, every single piece of the modular armor here, and we are now pretty awesome in terms of the things that we can do. So if we go ahead and take all these off, I'll show you some of the upgrades that I have gone ahead and thrown onto these guys, starting with the helmet. Uh, if we look here, I've added the auto feeder, which for anybody who has ever watched any amount of my videos ever will be able to tell you I need this upgrade like just desperately. I always forget to eat. I'm always on like half a heart because we're starving because we have no hunger. It happens to me like literally all the time. So the auto feeder basically takes any food in your inventory, sucks it all up into the helmet and then slowly dispenses it to you to make sure that you are constantly fed until that food runs out, at which point you'll start to lose hunger. But you can just take like a thousand apples, store them all in your inventory, the helmet will suck them all up and then you will start getting fed them again slowly over time. And if we were to go ahead and take a look, uh, wow, we move so much slower. With, without the armor on here, but if we go take a look in this guy, we should maybe have some spare potatoes, and if we, if you'll see, it just starts to take them away, we have 11 right now, it looks like we may have hit the cap in terms of uh, how many uh, potatoes we can store in our auto feeder, I'm not quite sure what, oh no, there we go, as soon as I put it on, all the potatoes are just gone, and if we look at the chest plate, I've gone ahead and added the magnet upgrade, which means we now no longer need the magnet from the quantum flux mod, and all of our items that we drop on the floor, if we were to go ahead and throw that on will just instantly be pulled towards us and this is excellent for our mining laser it means that when we go mining we don't have to worry about carrying that magnet around all of our stuff will just get pulled towards us by our armor which is absolutely fantastic the legs probably have the most upgrades of any piece of armor i added jump boost calf shield and i think we already had step assist but step assist is basically the one that lets us walk directly up blocks without having to jump you can see we have walking assist that lets us run super fast we have jump assist which lets us jump extraordinarily high and then to go along side jump assist if we jump really high like this we do take damage and to go along with that damage if we look at our boots i went ahead and put the long fall dampeners on so if i was to put the boots on and then jump again we didn't take any damage. Now, you'll notice the boots are on the lowest uh, in terms of power right now. That's because I have been taking quite a bit of fall damage uh, testing this thing out. And that is because I have been jumping off this mountain right here. Now, the cool thing about the step assist is we can kind of just run all the way up this mountain without having to jump once, which is kind of fantastic. And then the other cool thing is that we can go ahead and kind of just do this these massive jumps, and because of our boots, we take absolute zero fall damage, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the final thing I want to talk about before we start doing what I want to work on this episode is, last episode, I mentioned the jetpack. Now, the downside to the jetpack is that it requires a nether star, which obviously requires that we fight the wither, which requires that we kill a ton of wither skeletons to get those three wither skeleton skulls. And I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> and so for now, because we've got this jump assist, we can kind of get all around our base, uh, even to the top of this little tower here, if we kind of jump onto here. So we can get pretty much anywhere we need to get within our current base, and we don't take any fall damage, uh, and it doesn't really take much effort to get around the place. So for now, I'm not going to go ahead and make the jetpack. I probably will make it at some point in the future, because of course, creative mode flying is so much better than what we have now. But for now, I'm going to leave it, and we're going to work on some other stuff, starting with something that we should have made a flipping heck of a long time ago, and that is the eye bench. This is something that a bunch of people, I think, have mentioned to me in the uh, the comment section, and did we name, did we name like this? Oh, we named that the eye drill, didn't we? We didn't name the uh, the bench there. We can't actually name this, but the eye bench is a mod all on its own that adds, like, five items, these five items here, and basically... It's a portable crafting table. Now, the main reason that we're going to make this is not because um, it's portable. It's mainly because this doesn't work. And the number of times in an episode that I have to, like, restart stuff because this thing crashes when we try and use the NEI shift click is a flipping pain in the backside. So, we're going to we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves an eye bench. It's fairly simple to make. We need the blueprints, which are made using lapis and a book. We then also need the crafting core, which is made using an apple, a crafting table, and a chest, and then some gold and some iron and a glass pane. There is an, an eye bench plus, which is a little bit more expensive. It requires the crafting core plus, which is made using the golden apple instead of the normal apple. 
I have no idea what the difference is between the iBench and the iBench Plus. I think it might just be bigger. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. If there is actually any features uh, of the iBench Plus, let me know in the comment section. But I think it's kind of a play on the whole iPhone and iPhone Plus. Like the six, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. I think the, the big bigger one is just bigger. That's it. Uh, I don't think it really matters. I looked on the wiki and it just says more like better in the way that matters in like a sarcastic air quotes thing so uh, i have no idea if it's actually any better let me know in the comment section if it is but without further ado let's go see if we have what it takes to make this thing first of all we're gonna need a book which we may or may not have but we do have some leather and we should have a ton of sugar cane, which we do. So let me take, like, all of this. <laughs> we only need three, actually. So I'll just take three. Lapis should be in the precious duck section. Let's go ahead and take just eight of those. I don't want to fill up my inventory with a bunch of junk like we've been doing in the past. So I'm going to try my best to kind of keep it to a, a limited amount. Let's go ahead and use this for probably one of the last times here to make this, uh, this book. So we'll do that. Boom. Boom. That gets the book. We'll then surround it with lapis. We've got to do all these things manually because otherwise, as I mentioned before, it just will crash. Uh, we should have some glass panes lying around somewhere, but we'll make some more because why not? We've got a ton of glass and it's only worth one EMC, so it's really not too expensive. Uh, we then just need the crafting core, which is a crafting table and mainly just an apple, which again, I think we should maybe possibly don't have. Wow, really? Let's have a look here. Apple. I thought we may have had one. Apparently, that is not the case. All right, let's go ahead and grab our ruby axe. And I guess for the first time in a long while, we are going to go and come down a tree. That is something that we haven't done in such a long time. And actually, a bunch of people in the comment section of the last video did mention that if we go ahead and shift right click on the atomic disassembler, we can change the mode. So this vein off, normal, slow, and then fast. Off, of course, just doesn't work. I'm not quite sure that's a thing, but I guess it's there nevertheless. Uh, the one I'm really interested in is fast, because when it's on fast, this thing tears through stuff like it is nobody's business. If we head on down here and just kind of start doing this, and especially on dirt, it just destroys stuff. It is kind of fantastic. Uh, and if we were to go ahead and check this out on a tree real quick, say this one. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We could just tear through everything. Oh, I love it. We'll just tear through this guy. There we go. All right, did we get an apple? We didn't. What the heck? Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Get rid of all of you. Any apples, please? I think we got an apple, didn't we? No? I thought I saw a red apple just kind of fall past me. Oh! No! No! Okay! <laughs> okay! Our helmet is eating the apples. I, I just broke accidentally this stone chopper here that was chopping all our trees. I didn't mean to chop that to break it there, but the reason I broke it uh, is because our, our flipping atomic disassembly here was just so flipping fast. Um, all of the apples, I thought it was really odd there. I, I chopped down like 10 trees and didn't get any apples, and the reason is because our helmet was consuming them pretty much instantly, which is not at all what we want. So, now that we've taken the helmet off for a brief second, we should be able to get an apple fairly quickly. There we go. I'm going to say, I, I was sure that I saw a few flashes of red whilst I was cutting down those trees. It seemed a little weird that we didn't have any whatsoever. Anyway, now we can go ahead and make ourselves a crafting table as well as a chest and combine that up with our new apple. And we get ourselves a crafting course. So I think that's actually all we need to make it. We need that there. Then we just need gold and iron, which should be both fairly easy to grab from here. I think we have more gold than that. Oh, I thought we had more gold than that. Apparently, I was mistaken. Let me do a quick check over here. We have some iron, which is nice. I'm fairly certain we should have more stuff lying around somewhere, though. Anyway, let's throw that there, that there. And then do this, and that gets us the iBench. So now, if we were to go ahead and just kind of right-click anywhere in the world, we have this iBench. And for instance, if I was to go ahead and type in chest as just a simple... Actually, let's just type in oak wood as just a simple example here to show the shift click works, because that just make instantly makes it like 10 times better than the, uh, the crafting station that we have behind us, because this thing just crashes whenever I try and shift click. So now we can literally be anywhere in the world because of the fact that the storage modular tablet can craft from anywhere. It can grab our stuff from anywhere and this guy can craft from anywhere. We are like the most portable people in the world. We can be all the way up this mountain and then we can just open this, grab any of our stuff, open this guy over here and craft any of our stuff from pretty much anywhere in the world, which if you ask me is pretty freaking awesome. So
<laughs> That's the first thing that I want to do today. I would also like to get rid of the spider, if at all possible. And the next thing that I would like to start on today is Blood Magic. So Blood Magic is installed in this mod pack, as well as a few uh, additional mods that work around Blood Magic. Uh, and I was a bit confused when I first saw it, because this mod pack is kind of fully based around the smaller mods, or the lesser known mods, and Blood Magic is far from a lesser known mod. Blood Magic has kind of been in all of the big packs for quite some time now, and I think the reason it is in is kind of to make you play around with some of the other, like, add-on mods for Blood Magic, like Blood R like Sangumance and all that kind of stuff that are around here and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to start today probably by just doing some of the basic blood magic stuff and then next episode I want to try automating some things uh, using Sangumance I want to play around with Aura Cascade maybe get a mob spawner going that's going to work alongside our blood magic system all that kind of cool stuff and hopefully it'll be really really good but to start with of course we have to go with the basics and that requires a diamond two gold a furnace and a four stone in order to make ourselves the blood altar so let's go ahead and switch over to here we should have some stone somewhere i'm not quite convinced yet that i like this system uh, of of accessing stuff through the um the RF tools thing here, uh, it's good. I think it's definitely better than the chest system that we have over here, but I, I'm definitely missing applied energistics when it comes to the just the, the crafting terminals and all that kind of stuff. But we cannot be picky when we do not have a mod such as applied energistics installed. So we will live with what we have got. And I think we should have a furnace in the furnace section. No, really? Okay, well, we should definitely have some cobblestone. And we do, but I think it's in one of the chests, maybe? Yes, we also had some in our bag here, that's fine. All right, let's go ahead and get our iBench, because I'm no longer using it. I'm just going to completely boycott the project table now. It has lost all of my flipping time and energy, because it is such a pain in the backside, and it's caused so many crashes. There goes the Blood Altar, and as always, for now, I'm going to start outside. I'm kind of just going to work here for now, and what I will probably do either between this episode and next, or between episode, like, 17 and 18, uh, at some point in the near future, I will make a new room, uh, maybe even a new tower for the uh, the Blood Altar here. Although the Blood Altar does get pretty big, I believe the Tier 6 Blood Altar is, like, 26 by 26 by, like, 19, so it's a flipping massive structure. I might have to build it underground, or maybe I'll just build, like, a another floor higher up i'm not quite sure anyway let's get started with blood magic so for those who don't know blood magic is a mod it's a magic mod that runs on blood so if you played with farmcraft the main like core component of it or the main core like resource is v it's in your wand it's in aura node you use it to make unlock research stuff like that uh, in tech mods it's usually redstone flux you generate redstone flux and then use it to do stuff in blood magic you use blood and then use that blood to do cool stuff so how do we get blood we to start by making ourselves a sacrificial orb fairly easy to make it's some gold some iron and some glass which for once we don't have to go ahead and grab because we have it all right here so if we do something like this boom and then i think it was gold and iron that gets us a sacrificial orb and it says a slight draining feel tickles your fingers and basically <laughs> we're getting a lot of achievements and fireworks but basically all we have to do is stand next to the blood altar right click we lose a heart and get i think about 100 millibuckets worth of blood uh, in the blood altar here so i'm gonna do this a few times and get us all the way down to one here now i don't think that soul fray has been enabled in this pack so is it nighttime? I have no idea what time it is. I'm going to go ahead and break my bed. I'm going to go and try something here because if Sulfur, which is the debuff, is not enabled, can I sleep? I can. If Sulfur is not enabled, we might be able to kind of kill ourselves and then respawn and do the same thing over and over again. So if I was to die here and respawn right at my bed, can I? Oh, we have the soul fray debuff. Okay. So basically what the soul fray debuff is over here, it's a little debuff that starts whenever you die. Uh, it's basically a part of blood magic that's there to stop you doing exactly what I was trying to do. Uh, and that means that basically if I was to do this now, we get much less blood. So without soul fray, oh no, 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 come on. What is that? Okay. Well, <laughs> Flipping egg. Basically, without Soul Flare, Soul Flare, when you right click, you give about 100 blood points, I think. And then with Soul Flare, you give about 10. So it's basically an incentive to not kill yourself and then respawn. Um, however, I do want to try something here because sometimes you can drink milk. Oh gosh, that is loud. Sometimes you can, I think it's blocks. 
Sometimes you can drink milk and get rid of the debuff. So I'm going to try this real quick. Can we simply right-click a cow and get milk with a bottle? I have no idea because my vanilla knowledge sucks. The answer is apparently no. So instead, let's try and make a bucket. That should definitely work. I know this works for sure. Let's get a bucket and let's try that. If I just grab you, can I drink this? I can. Does it get rid of sulfury? It doesn't. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away now. I'm going to make another bed, apparently, and another blood altar. I'm going to wait for the sulfur debuff to go away, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, I've gone ahead and made another blood altar. This time, I put it on the roof so that we don't get crept upon by a creeper that's going to explode and ruin our day. And we've also gone ahead and got rid of the sulfur buff just by basically waiting five minutes for it to go away. And I've gone ahead and given about 25-ish, I think. Uh, little red hearts to this thing. We're going to go ahead and give a few more here. Uh, thankfully, our helmet is keeping us full on hunger, which means that our health does heal up fairly quickly, which is pretty nice. And now, we're going to go ahead and make the first item uh, that we need to make to kind of get started with blood magic, and that is the weak blood orb. It says, stores raw life essence, and this is made by putting a diamond into a tier 1 altar and giving it 2,000 life points. So, this is a tier 1 altar, and uh, this is what it looks like. We're going to try and make a tier 2 altar uh, at some point today, and to do that, we are, of course, going to need a blood orb. So, Let's take this guy. Let's put it in here. That's going to start to drain some of the blood. I think we should have 2,000 life points in there. But to be safe, we will give a few more little jabs. And that should, any second now, transform into a weak blood orb. Which we're then going to use to make a division sigil. A uh, divination sigil, sorry. Uh, because this allows us to see exactly how much blood is in our blood altar. Which is really useful because then we don't have to guess. And we can actually start to work things out. So... Any second now, and you also should see the blood kind of going down ever so slightly, the, the level of blood that is in the blood altar. And there we go, voila, it has now made a weak blood orb, and now, basically what we can do is we can stick this in there, and that's going to go ahead and absorb life points. I think we have to right-click to kind of bind it to us, and right now it doesn't say how much life essence is in there, but if we were to go ahead and make a division sigil, we should be able to find out. So to make this, we need a one type of blood orb, you can use any kind uh, at all, including the weak blood orb. We need a blank slate and some glass. The blank slate is made by infusing one piece of stone with 1,000 life points. This should take half as long as the uh, the diamond did because it takes half as much stuff and actually should be be pretty quick here and we are actually going to need quite a few of these because the next thing that we're going to need to make a tier 2 altar and actually that's already done itself so let's take you let's go make this to make a tier 2 altar we need 8 of these blood runes which are made using blank slates stone and of course that will be blood orb so we need 16 of these blank slates in, in order to upgrade oh my god Goodness, that is so loud in order to upgrade to a tier 2 blood altar, which I would hopefully like to do at some point today. So I have gone ahead and started smelting up a ton of cobblestone. And now, if we were to do something like this, boom, boom, and boom, we get ourselves a division sigil. Now, this does uh, that you keep the, the weak blood orb when it's used in recipes. It doesn't get used up. You get to use it over and over and over again. And now, if we were to go ahead and kind of, if we right click it anywhere in the world, it will tell us how many life points are currently stored within our weak blood orb, which we can carry around. And later on down the line, we're going to use to kind of use as a portable source of storage. Think of it like a portable battery from thermal expansion. It kind of stores the blood for us, so we can use it in things like tools and stuff later on down the line. But if we were to go ahead and right click on the blood altar uh, with the divination like when we right, like stood next to it, it will tell us that the altar's current capacity is 10,000, its current tier is 1, and its current energy is 5,800 life points. I believe if we put this in here and then keep right clicking, it is going to start to lose life points and transfer them over into the weak blood orb, which is exactly what it's doing. So, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away again. I'm going to make myself 16 of these blank slates, and I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, now that we have 16 of these blank slates, what we can go ahead and do is we can upgrade our altar from tier 1 to tier 2. So we have to go ahead and make ourselves 8 of these blood runes, which can be made like so. And all we got to do is surround this thing with 8 like so, and then move the blood altar up one without breaking the glass, which is a little bit hard, and also that jumper boost is a little bit annoying sometimes, but uh, if we go ahead and put the blood altar here, and then get rid of this, now if we right-click with our division sigil, 
tier two. We have a tier two blood altar, and now we can start to make things that require a tier two blood altar. For instance, if we were to look at this item over here, the dagger of sacrifice, this guy is made using 3,000 life points in a tier two blood altar, and this item is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give like a bunch of life here, then I'm going to go away and make this thing just so my health can kind of regen a little bit whilst we wait and let's go ahead and make some sticks i love the fact that we can do everything from within our inventory now it is so cool and now if we were to put this in here and give it 3,000 life points which we almost have all this is going down very slowly which i'm not quite sure why that is yeah, I'm not quite sure why that's going down ever so slowly, but it is. That's not very good at all. Uh, also, I didn't really mention about these runes here. There are a bunch of other runes that you can put down uh, that are not just basic blood runes. These are the basic, most basic, okay, I guess, runes that you can put down. You can also put things like the augmented capacity runes that increase the amount of blood that a blood also can hold. You can put down like acceleration runes, speed runes, efficiency runes, all kinds of stuff. These are a little more expensive um, than the base blood rune, but they do give it like nice little buffs like more storage. They make things faster. They make rituals cheaper and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, we are getting quite a bit of blood to make this guy work, and I have turned sound off just because that uh, that machine now says it's really, really loud. Uh, I would put this in right now, but actually I will put it in just to kind of show you this. If the blood altar runs out of blood before it's finished doing what it's doing, then it kind of starts to take blood out of the item, and you start to kind of lose blood, and then it takes more and more blood, and you kind of end up in this downward spiral of losing blood if the blood altar doesn't have enough blood in it for the item you're trying to craft. So in this case, the, uh, the dagger of sacrifice sacrifice this might actually kind of run out and then kind of start to do a little particle effect to show you that it's kind of drying up and needs more blood to finish what it's doing uh, and we should see that any second now and we didn't because we had enough stuff which is kind of awesome and this guy is really really cool so you may have noticed that so far it's a little bit tedious to do all of this stuff with the blood altar it takes a while but the Dagger of Sacrifice is really cool because now we, what we can do is we can put mobs on top of the Blood Altar. And if we kill them with the Dagger of Sacrifice, blood from the mobs will go into the Blood Altar. And that is a much easier, much quicker, much more sustainable way of getting blood than doing it ourselves. Because health takes a long time to heal up. So what I'm going to do, guys, is next time we're going to come back. I'm going to set up some Aura Cascade stuff. And I'm going to try using the spawner from Aura Cascade to spawn mobs, have them fall onto the Blood Altar here so that we can then kill them and then use the... The, the blood from the blood altar to do some cool stuff. We're also going to jump into a little bit of Sangumansi, try and do some automation with blood magic and all that cool stuff. But for now, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. And I will see you guys next time.